Good afternoon, everyone. Now I know why people got nervous up here. <laughs> it's not only a very, um, there's not only a lot of light on us, but um, you all look gorgeous. <laughs> Okay, so um, I have to begin by saying that it is a great gift to occupy this space with all of you today for reasons that will become clearer in a moment. I also have to say that I have received so many um, beautiful words of thanks um, for helping to create this space with Rashida and with Simone and with Saidia and with Susan and with all the other people who have made this possible. Um, and I will say to you out loud what I've been saying to everyone who's come up to me, which is that it does nothing to create a space unless you have the people to fill that space with the kind of generosity that all of you have brought to this space. That is what makes it. Um, um, I must also apologize for the fact that I don't have any videos or audios because this just came together at the early in the week and so I was too late even for the magical people who are working our tech today. They could not conjure that into being. Um, I'm going to be talking about something we've been talking about for the last two days and all I'm going to do is name it. So. Um, I dedicate these words to um, Simone for what she's gifted us here, to Rashida for how she's made it accessible to so many people, to Saidia for continuing to share that big fat brain of her that challenges us every day, and to my thought collaborators um, at, the pre at the Practicing Refusal Collection who nourish my mind and my soul. Here we go. I've spent the, per the first part of this week thinking with a group of friends and radical co-conspirators, many of whom are here in the audience today, called the Practicing Refusal Collective. We've been talking about what it would mean to create a vocabulary that thinks from blackness, taking blackness as its origin and source of inspiration. We've been thinking about how to define a set of terms for living blackness boundlessly, beyond all limitations, something some might call living blackness as freedom. The term I've chosen to contribute was prompted by one of the concepts offered to us as a directive for our assembly here in Venice, medicine. It is a term defined in the idiom of our convening as broad and traditional approaches to, diver to diverse ailments, physical, spiritual, natural, and supernatural. Using the qualities of science, plants, and animals to cope with the natural and supernatural world around us. The work of root and leaf doctors, traditional healers, and conjurers of the rural black America, American South, and the global South. I have to confess that I've spent the past three years watching medicine fail. I, like so many of us here, have spent three years grieving that failure and mourning indelible losses. The loss of an aunt to COVID, the loss of a father to cancer, the loss of another aunt to cancer on an annual basis. The term that I'm interested in sits adjacent to the idea of medicine as its necessary supplement. It is a supplement I have spent the past three years watching, feeling, doing, and receiving. Medicine is a treatment for an injury or a wound, but it is not necessarily an antidote or a cure. While medicine can heal, this is not always the case, and it's never guaranteed. For medicine to heal, it requires a supplement. It requires care. Care, noun. The provision of what is necessary for the health, welfare, maintenance, and protection of someone or something. Serious attention or consideration applied to doing something correctly or to avoid damage or risk. Verb, to feel concern or interest attach importance to something, 
to look after and provide for the needs of. Care is healing without the presumption of a cure or a guarantee of survival. Care is comfort, compassion, and sustenance delivered even in the face of inevitable failure. Care is a demonstration and instantiation of attachment and relation. Care is also a refusal. It is a refusal to be insensitive to the pain or suffering of others. It is a refusal to look away or look past the precarity of those in need. I want us to think about care as more than a noun or a verb. I want us to think about its multiplicity of forms and registers. I want to embrace its multiple frequencies as sound, touch, time, and feeling. Care is the touch of another that heals not because it takes away pain, but because it recognizes that pain and accompanies you through it. It is the wordless look that acknowledges that suffering will not last always, but refuses to let you bear it alone. It is the sound of a quiet hum, a melodious song, or a low whisper that opens space for another, fills it with companionship, and envelops you in a protective sonic cloud. It is a temporal loop of durational presence, waiting, sitting, standing beside, holding. What are the frequencies of care or caring for black bodies? How might those frequencies be mobilized as part of a lexicon for understanding the possibility for black people to live unbounded lives? More specifically, what does care sound like? It's a question that I've grappled with in extremely generative ways through the work of artists who catalyze the sonic and effective frequencies of care in ways that compel us to listen to what care might sound like. But it's a question that first confronted me in the form of its striking absence. It was a scene streamed over and over around the world, a scene repeated far too often in far too many places. A black man wrestled to the ground, blue-clad officers forcing breath from his body, pleas for breath that went unyielded. But in John Comfort's five murmurations, he compels us not so much to watch the scene, but to witness it through sound. We listen to it unfold in slow motion in the final extraordinary minutes of the film while looking at three dark, flickering scene screens. What I heard in that installation was not what I expected. I did hear that gut-wrenching, grasping voice again and again, but I was forced also to attend to the other voices, which against the black backdrop of three dark screens resonating with chilling impact. You seem to be talking just fine. It takes a heck of a lot of oxygen to talk. What I heard was the raging absence of care, the willful negation of it, the relegation of a body to death. Which returns me to my question, what does care sound like? It is the sound of coughs and laughter, of mumbling, singing, claps and coos, rattles and intermittently decipherable voices. Sounds of rebellion, sounds of protest, sounds of an explosion that sought to destroy a domicile and a movement, but didn't. They intermingle with the abstract rhythms and the musical soundtrack of the 1970s black life. It is an ambient frequency of care that's Simone described as sonic protection in her 2019 installation, Loophole of Retreat One. They are sounds that were conjured creatively and intentionally by fellow inmates of Debbie Sims Africa at the Cambridge Springs Women's Prison in Erie, Pennsylvania, where she was incarcerated for the death of a police officer who, had, who participated in a military-style siege of the home and headquarters of Debbie and her fellow members of the Black Liberation Group MOVE in Philadelphia. Idling as distraction outside her prison cell, her incarcerated sisters created a web of acoustic protection while she gave birth to her son, 
a month after her incarceration. What we hear in Loophole of Retreat 1 is the reincarnation of this wall of sonic protection. It is a soundscape created by Lee and Moore Mother um, that streamed within the lattice concrete walls of the Loophole installation. It was the sound of care exercised by a collectivity of incarcerated women who used sound to protect a mother and her newborn child for three short days of bonding before being discovered and separated by prison guards. Drips and splashes, ebbs and flows. It is the sound of water, musically syncopated and rhythmically reconstituted through a cacophony of voicings by Theaster Gates and the Black Monks. It is the soundtrack to his 2019 film, Dance of Malaga, which weaves a sonovisual portrait of a community of mixed race black families that inhabited Malaga Island off the coast of the US state of Maine. Water was the life force of this community and its conduit of care. It was a protective barrier, a passageway, and a sanctuary for a community that trespassed the boundaries of racial mixture. They refused the strictures of anti-blackness by choosing the isolation and autonomy provided by the waters surrounding Malaga Island and as a means to create an intentional community of kin and kind. Water sustained them as fishers and seafarers and sheltered them for decades until state officials threatened to displace them from the island. And when, according to their descendants, they packed their belongings, deconstructed their homes, and floated them south on rafts to resettle on the mainland and other islands, they use water to, to refuse the state's eviction order, mobilizing it as a liberating force and a line of flight that allowed them to create a path to a different future. In Dance of Malaga, the sound of water is the sound of care. Care as redress for historical injury and erasure. Gates's audio track uses the sound of water to sing the erased community of Malaga into visibility. Their tones summon their presence into sight. Their sonic frequencies intertwine the sounds of water that sustain this community with the sounds of music that celebrate them. It is a very different sound, a tinny sound I heard through my cell phone. It is a sound that began with the ring of her cell phone at the other end of my call. She picked up, but she did not respond. I heard the rustle of hands on the microphone and the phone itself being jostled and moved and then finally finding rest. I heard muffled voices speaking not to me, but to each other. I heard my cousin in conversation with my aunt's doctor. I heard him say her mom would go quickly now and that she needed to be prepared. I heard my cousin say, I want to be strong for her. And I heard the doctor say, no, you do not have to be strong. Your strength is clear and your love is clear. All you have to do is love her. It was a sublime mistake that my cousin picked up the phone and thought she had hung up when in fact I was still on the line. But it was a mistake that, at an extremely dark time in my life, granted me access to an intimate frequency of care. What I heard was the sound of an exhausted ICU doctor caring for my exhausted cousin and caring for my dying aunt. My family heard the serial sounds of care enabled by the fact that her ICU nurses placed 10 calls in the hours after that call that I overheard to individual members of my family using my aunt's cell phone. They held her cell phone to her ear in her final hours so that we could sing and speak and coo and hum to her and shatter the barrier of isolation of the COVID ward with an intimate frequency of care. I'll repeat the question one more time. What are the frequencies of care or caring for black bodies? It is an audio track that has no tangible form, and yet its sound still registers resoundingly in my ears. It is the sound of our first convening of the loophole of retreat back in 2011, in 2019, in April of 2019. 
In that very unlikely place in the auditorium of the Guggenheim Museum, I believe that what we conjured was the frequency of care. It was a sound of care that registered to me in the hush of quiet listening with fierce focus and sustained concentration. I heard it in the form of sighs and in a sound of deep connection that rumbled and resonated and that reemerged over and over in this room all day, yesterday, and today. It's that deep guttural sound that I associate with black women thinking together and registering affirmation with black women together, I'm sorry, registers affirmation that rises almost involuntarily from us. Mm. <laughs> it is a frequency of care that resounds and embraces with strangers and expressions of gratitude for a space we created and held together. A space countless people have described to me since then, and which I would also use to describe our assembly here as church. Thank you.